Welcome back to Bash Bros in episode 31 of Notorious Pro Wrestling, the TEW Let's Play series where we find out what exactly would happen if Conor McGregor started his own wrestling promotion. Uh, so you just haven't missed anything, you know, last time you were here it, it was the uh, Wind Your Neck in pay-per-view and, and it was a little lacklustre, um, it was a weird show altogether due to the fact we put on an absolute ball buster of a show uh, the week before. Um, like there's no title defences on this show, that's the weird thing. Uh, so we got a 54 and we had, you know, uh, Ace and Romo versus Chris here and Ace and Reese, uh, and then the reveal of the master as well, which was Jake the Snake Roberts. Um, we had Michael Sadamore versus Kelly Kel Killer Kelly, uh, with the return of Tessa Blanchard, uh, as we're going to start wrapping up the Tessa Blanchard versus the Joshi Wrestlers feud. Uh, continued the Zia and Tenniel mentorship storyline, with Tenniel being a bit abusive towards Zia. Um, we finished... <laughs> finally finished the Dynasty vs Grado Talent Agency storyline 2 with Kenny walking out on the Grado Talent Agency. But yes, in terms of world news, before we get into our, our own company news, only one real bit of ska, uh, which is Eddie Edwards has left Impact, so he was on a written exclusive contract with Impact, I believe, and now he's a free agent. And I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wanna sign him. I kinda do. I think Eddie Edwards was always one of those guys who was a fantastic in-ring worker but had no character. And since an impact, admittedly he has just become B-Tech Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> but at least it is some semblance of a character. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to leave. I'm going to shortlist them in the meantime, and we shall see. We shall see. Uh, that's it in terms of world news. In terms of local news for ourselves, a couple of contracts are up. Um, so a lot of our women's tournament contracts are kind of. A lot of the women we signed for the tournament, their contracts are starting to come up. Alexa Bobby Tyler. I, I don't think I can't. I literally could not tell you the last time I used her. Um, so I think I'm going to let her go. Uh, Killer Kelly, uh, she's just been so disappointing. She really hasn't done a great match yet. Like she's only doing about 30, th high 30s, which is kind of not where I need. Like, it's just very disappointing. So I might let her go too. Email on Z, although she's not great, does serve a, a purpose as a jobber. Um, so I might keep her for another six months or so. And Asuka, if she was more readily available, I would keep her. I think I've already kind of extended her contract once. Yeah, a couple of times I've extended her contract just to kind of keep her a bite. Um, but she's just like her schedule. Oof. You know, like look at that, like. She can't even appear on Wanted every week. Ooh. So yeah, I think Asuka's, I think Asuka's time has come. Um, I'm going to use her a couple of times in the next four weeks, leading up to the pay-per-view, but yeah. And the last bit of news is... I've, 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 I've folded, guys. Um, NXT UK have won this round. Uh, so our pay-per-views, I've actually moved them to Sunday now. Um, the reason for that being was that... NXT UK, because they're massive dicks, moved their tape, or went live, first of all, so they don't uh, record in, a bat in batches anymore. Uh, they do live shows, and they moved themselves to Saturday nights, which you had seen a couple of times. It was really causing me issues. <laughs> really, really causing me issues. Yeah, so it was really causing me issues. Um, like, if you, you know, look at it here, you know, when you look at Sundays, there's no... Like there's because Sundays are kind of like WWE's real estate, yeah. So there's like no conflicts anymore. So yeah, they, the NXT UK have won this round. Um, fuck them, <laughs> fuck I hate them. Um, so that's all the news taken care of. Uh, let's look at the storylines then, which will happen over the next four weeks. So starting from the bottom. Uh, so yeah, at the pay per view, Kenny Williams walked out on Great Hotel NC. So that's going to lead to him feuding with them going forward, and I believe the blow off 
I'm torn. The blow off of that is either going to be Mark Andrews versus Kenny because they will be the two most over, or it will be Grado versus Kenny because it kind of makes sense. I know we don't really have Grado wrestle that much, but uh, like Kenny would have mo- more of an issue with Grado because Grado talked him into it and all that jazz, and then you know then went and signed Mark Andrews and kind of forgot about Kenny. So yeah, torn. I think that's what the blow off match will be, but that'll be about a two month feud. I'll work out that. Uh, we're continuing then with Tenniel versus Zia. At the minute, obviously, they are kind of still uh, partnered together. Um, so yeah, Tenniel versus uh, T- Tenniel is continuing to mentor and trying to teach Zia. You know, you need, you need to be you need to be bad to, to be to get by in professional wrestling, um, and that will lead. Uh, st- still got about another couple of months in the tank. Uh, I think the plan is I'll have Zia kind of. Due to Tanil kind of beating the shit out of her, and being abusive towards her, Zia's going to end up, you know, helping her get a title shot, which will then happen in a pay per view probably. You know, Tanil versus Viper, and then Tanil won't win that, and then maybe the blow off will happen after that. Uh, so Tessa versus Joshi wrestlers that'll be wrapping up in the next month or two. Um, it's gone on for long enough, I think. So yeah, Tessa, I, my plan is Tessa's probably going to win this, um, and then she's going to be the next challenger for Vi- the next proper challenger for Viper, or the next storyline feud for Viper, which will be good. Uh, good, I'd say Tessa, although she is in real life a bit of a dick, you can't deny she's very good. She's a very good, uh, very good wrestler. There's a reason she's the first uh, woman in Impact to hold the world title. Uh, Coach Doug then, so it's still going on. Uh, my plan is for this month is... Storm will get involved in this, and he will be the guy that'll be tell Doug like you know, like, Reese is just using you. How can you not see this? Which will lead to a match between the two, and then Easton Reese's face turn will happen at the pay per view, and then they'll kind of feud with Ace and Carlos for a bit because I just want to give Ace and Carlos something to do. So recently debuted Crazy Mary Dobson, uh, GW at the pay per view. She will be feuding with Killer Kelly. Probably is an exit feud for Killer, Ke- Killer Kelly. Uh, say she won't be allowing for much longer. So yeah, that'll happen. Yeah, that'll happen over the next couple of weeks. And then I will probably have her feud with either Kelly Ray or Alpha Female. Yeah, because I want to keep Tessa away from any losses for a bit. So yeah, uh, that'll probably yeah. So Crazy Mary Dobson say we'll beat Killer Kelly and then go on a feud with either Alpha Female or Kelly Ray. So Grizzly Young Vets won the tag team title tournament recently and have been feuding with the Mighty Duke Neil. There's probably been only about another month left on this. And um, we will look to see who the challengers will be after that. We don't... At the minute, we don't really have any big face tag teams because, and we found this out recently, or maybe I mentioned it before, I don't know, but Rich Swan has injured his bi- tore his bicep and he's out for six months. They were our only real other face tag team that weren't jobbers because the NIC at the minute are kind of jobbers. They kind of are, let's be honest. So, yeah, that's disappointing. (laughs) Um, I kind of have an idea of who the next challengers will be, but yeah, don't know just yet. Alpha Female versus uh, Viper and then Kelly Ray will also be added to this feud. Uh, So this this will wrap up this month. Um, There will be a triple threat at the pay-per-view, which Viper will will win probably and then she'll go on to face Tessa in the next storyline feud. Finally then, uh, so obviously Jake Roberts was revealed to be the master at the pay-per-view and that is going to lead to another pay-per-view match between Pentagon Jr. and Chris Hero at the next pay-per-view Banjaxed and I'm kind of leaning towards Pentagon winning, not gonna lie, kind of think he is our best wrestler at the minute um especially with jake in his corner uh plus like it's kind of cool because like the way pentagon is des- like his look and then with chris hero being called hero you know it like it's just it's like a hero versus villain thing like it really is and like a literal hero ver- hero versus villain thing uh so yeah i'm 100 percent think that's i think pentagon's gonna win which then will lead to a slew of like face uh, challengers. So like we've got Easton Reese, he's going to probably go ahead and face for it. Uh, James Storm, he has unfinished business with Pentagon Junior too. And then there's a couple of people who are coming in that I've signed, which I haven't revealed yet, who also will 
are also there to be challengers to a, a heel champion. Oh, and I kind of, uh, yeah, I kind of, for a wee bit, I might even have uh, Mark Andrews and the Great Talent Agency uh, face off against Pentagon Jr. I might do that too, because Mark Andrews is very, very good, and it could lead to also a bit of stable versus stable warfare with GTA versus the Masters stable, who, who I haven't named yet. Um, um, but that's all storylines will be happening in the next couple of weeks, up to the next pay-per-view, uh, Banjax pay-per-view. Yeah, so that is everything covered, so let's book this week's Wanted. Okay, and we are back live from Voodoo in Belfast. It is Wanted, so... What do we have here? What do we have here? So, uh, looking at the pre-show then, so a couple of promos and stuff, um, to continue feuds, uh... Such as the Mary Dobson Killer Kelly feud and the Tessa Joshi's feud, Alpha Female getting a wee bit of a momentum as well, and then the Grizzly Young Vets uh, promo slash angle to continue that as well, and then onto the main card we're looking at, and then moving on to the main card, um, we have the continuation of Pentagon and the Coach Doug and the Zia feuds. So yeah, that should be an alright week card. Not too sure about the main event. I don't know how good Will, Will Hobbs only really had one match and Easton Reese is not bad, but not great either. So let's start the show. So in a backstage promo, Jennifer Louise is interviewing Crazy Mary Dobson whenever Killer Kelly and Tessa Blanchard attack her um, as revenge for her interfering herself in at the pay-per-view on Saturday past. Uh, 38 overall, suppose none of these women are particularly good talkers, so it's all right, it's on the pre-show. And a pre-show match then, Alpha Female squashed Amy Alon Z, 34 match, it was a squash, it wasn't gonna be great. Uh, let's give Alpha Female momentum going into this triple threat feud with Viper and Kaylee Ray. Then we have an absolute clusterfuck of an angle, so. Jennifer Louise enters the Grizzle Young Vets uh, locker room and they are celebrating and got sh- the champers, they've got their suits on, they look great. She tries to get a statement from them whenever a kid, or the like goes Jim, kick in the door, they're like, hold on, stop the party, we want a shot at the titles. We came in third uh, at the tournament. That's when uh, Great Otality, you see. Grado, Andrews and Umi are come in, they're like, hold on, hold on, you're not third, you know, that hasn't been decided yet, but then like was pointed out, well hold on, you know, Kenny Williams isn't with you guys anymore, so who's going to fight us to decide third place? And that's what Mark Andrews says, you know what, I'll step in, so Mark Andrews and Amir Jordan versus Lycos Jim next week for third place in the tournament and therefore a future title shot. 44 overalls, not bad. Uh, fucking clusterfuck of an absolute angle. But I'm happy we came away with 44. On to the main card then. So, uh, in a decent match, Zia Brookside defeated Debbie Keadle, uh in 1237 with the Iconoclasm. Uh, Debbie had a 36 and Zia had a 34. Zia is still not great, but I'm hoping the more exposure we give her, the better she'll get. But we'll see. Uh, depending on how this feud with Tennille goes, I might just give up on her, to be honest, but we'll see. Uh, 29 match was shite. <laughs> just shite. Uh, like, considering, I like, guess, 36. Like, it was a 12 minute match and the bite dragged in the middle. Like, what more do you want? Tag action next with a fantastic. and about that had a fantastic heat and great wrestling. Pentagon and Sonico defeated the NIC in 13 28 when Pentagon pinned Charlie Carter. Uh, Pentagon was head shoulders above the rest, we would have assumed that. Uh, so Charlie had a 37, Oshin had a 43, Sonigo had a 52, and Penta had a 63. Uh, 49 overall. The fact Sonigo had a 52, like that is a main event caliber performance on a weekly show. And Pentagon just proving, you know, he's awesome. God tier, you know. I also had then uh, Jacob Snake managing these two for the first time. Uh, so it looks like. Sonic and Jake have good chemistry, which is awesome. That's really good. Uh, that's really good. But yeah, so overall, very happy with that 49. Um, considering like the NIC are kind of our face jobber tag team, uh, that's really good. Like, considering that's, that's just shy of what a pay per view or what I wanted a weekly TV show me an event should be. Afterwards, then, Jake the Snake says they're going to take the heart of NPW. 
so, which is the title, obviously. And uh, Conor McGregor comes out. He's like, no, 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 no. We're not doing this. Not a chance. Like, you are not getting the title belt of my fucking company. Not happening. Um, but then Jake, you know, suckers him in because he's a, everyone just assumes he's a feeble man and drops him with a DDT. Uh, 76, considering three of the four are fantastic uh, promos. I'm happy with that. The main event is about that great heat and good wrestling. They should beat Will Hobbs in 2027. Powerbomb. 45. Uh, 45 from Easton. 46 from Hobbs. Drag the middle because none of them have fucking good psychology. And then I, the mismatch of... Uh, the, oh, 36. That's our main event. Oh... Guys, we're going to lose popularity on this. Oh my god, that is... That's rough. That is rough as fuck. Well, let's see how this goes, shall we? Uh, no, I'm, I, I'm sticking to my guns. We're not fucking changing them yet. And then a promo from James Storm. He returns and he comes into the ring and he's like, Doug, what are you doing? Reese is clearly just using you for... To, to further his career, he doesn't care about you, you know, just, you know, step aside, like, you know, stop this. Uh, and, yeah, that is, and that's 46. Uh, Jim Storm, obviously, very good on the, on the mic. Right. Oh, fuck. It's going to be a fucking shocking man. Oh, right. What is it? What is it? 43. Oof. Oh, Right, we didn't lose popularity, which is good, but that is possibly our worst worst show we've ever done. So news coming out of uh, that wanted then. So Goldberg's leaving WWE. It's probably because he's so fucking expensive. Le oh, Liv Morgan's leaving WWE. That's interesting. Oof, do I bring her in and reform two thirds of the Riot Squad? Oof. I'm tempted. I'm really tempted. Like, she's not a bad wrestler. She's not great. She's not bad. Her basics are very good. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I will shortlist her and leave it at the meantime. So that is it for news then. Um, I do want to check whether that was our worst show in history. Um, so that was at 43. Sort by rating. No, a 39 from February. Well, that was at the very start of the game. Uh, it is our second. <laughs> it is our second worst show in history. Wow, that was bad, guys. <laughs> that was really bad. not even a Conor McGregor promo could save that. Well, <laughs> that was it then for another week of. Notorious Pro Wrestling. You guys will be back, n I'm thinking next week, we'll do uh, September week one, and then after that we'll do a beeline straight to the Banjaxed pay-per-view. So next week then we'll have a number one contender match, uh, or a third place match of the tournament, between Lycos and the Greater Talent Agency. We'll also have Kelly Ray versus Alpha Female, with Viper doing guest commentary, I guess, maybe. Um, We'll have Tessa versus one of the Joshi wrestlers. I haven't decided just yet which one. And a bunch of angles and stuff to keep other storylines trucking along. Bis, that is it for this week. If you have enjoyed this episode, please do leave a like and a comment and subscribe and all that good shit. Also, let me know if you think I should sign Liv Morgan. How about that? You can let me know that too. Bis, with all that being said, I will see you next time on Bash Bros.